The Indian River County Chamber of Commerce does not endorse any political candidates. We provide these videos to our community and to our members to offer them the opportunity to be educated as we go into a busy political season. Introducing Peggy Jones, running for school board district three. Hi everyone, I'm Peggy Jones and I'm running for re-election for the Indian River County School Board District 3 race. You know, I thought about running again and I thought, why am I running? Well, I think there are a few reasons. Number one, my husband and I raised our children here. They all went to public schools. Two went to Vero Beach High School, one to Sebastian River High School when I was principal. They're all doing well with their masters, raising their families. And you know what? More importantly, they're good citizens. Another reason I'm running is I believe we're on the right path. Uh, we were in A school district last year. Our scores look good now. We'll get our grades maybe in a couple months. And our 96% graduation rate, you know, that is the culminating factor of any K-12 system. So we're doing well there. And I just want to keep going on that path. And I also believe all the positions that I've had have been an asset to me being on the school board. I've been a teacher, a coach, a dean, athletic director, assistant principal principal of two middle schools, one high school. I've been at the state level with the Florida High School Athletic Association, and then the district level, executive director of secondary and principal consultant. And now I'm on the school board. So when I listen to all the personnel issues or I listen to the student achievement issues or the challenges we have, I've got a background. I've got a foundation on, okay, here's where we are and here's where we need to go. So those are the three reasons I'm running. As far as challenges now in public school system, we do have some. Right now we have the voucher system where a parent can request a voucher to either homeschool their child, put their child in private or parochial education. So I guess you could say we're not the only game in town anymore. But what I see with that challenge is also something that is positive about the public school system. Every penny we spend, whether it's in our capital budget, our internal accounts, or in our operating budget, you can see what we're spending it on. And if you look at uh, the information that you would get from our CFO, most of it is going into the classroom and salaries. So the voucher system is challenging, but with the public school system, we are accountable. We are accountable to the State Department of Education for standards that we teach in each subject. We are accountable to the finances that we must report. We are accountable to teacher certification, administrative certification, the standards we must teach. And then as we all know, we're accountable for the testing, which we now do three times a year. And as a district then with the testing, we will do progress monitoring. So at any time a parent can see what is being taught, at any time a parent can go into the focus portal and see how their child is doing, and at any time you can see uh, or meet with the teacher if you have any concerns. So uh, with the voucher system, I think that we have a positive spin on that because we are accountable to our taxpayers, our community, and all of our citizens. As far as any other challenges, we have the millage coming up in November. And last time, 76% of our voters said, yes, let's do that for our students. And that was so very helpful. We use it for salaries for teachers, technology, reading coaches, uh, mental health, it was a lot of things that we did extra for our students. Right now in Florida, we are number 50 as far as teacher pay. One of my platforms, if you will, is recruiting and retaining teachers. And that pay doesn't help. So we've got to make sure we continue to talk with our State Department of Education, our legislators, because right now, I think we're number 42 as far as average teacher pay in the nation. New York and Vermont are at the top. So those are the things we have to continue to do. So given what we have with our teacher pay and given what we have with average teacher student allocation for our budget, we've got some challenges. So another thing we're looking at that's always at the top of our, uh, I guess you could say priority, making sure that our teachers have places to live here. You know, you could call it affordable housing or workforce housing. We as a community are starting to talk about this and I hope we can do better with that aspect. So the challenges, you know, of hopefully passing the millage, uh, again, we're very grateful, and the challenges of teacher pay and the challenges of a place where a teacher can live. So we've got to continue to look at those solutions. And the main reason is our students will do well when we have great teachers. So not only do we have to recruit them, we have to retain them. Um, in the mid-1970s, 
of all graduates in America were in education. Now, there are a couple reasons for that, because at that time, women were still probably going into nursing and education. Right now, it is less than 10%. So you will see counties around us doing great jobs of what can we do to get these teachers here and then get them to stay here. And I've talked to Dr. Moore about this and some other people have brought this up about making sure we grow our own. You know, now with the Promise Program in New River State College, we have tuition free the first two years. Maybe we can get some grants the last two years and then have a contract with the teacher to come back and teach with us. So that's another challenge, but we have to create the solutions ourselves, and I'd like to be part of that solution. My vision for this Indian River County School District, our public education, to me is pretty simple. We want our children to be successful when they graduate. You know, they could go into college or a university or into career, right into uh, a job skills, trade skills program, uh, arm services. So I want the children to make sure they have their next journey in life. And so in order to do that, as I said earlier, we as a community have to surround ourselves with making sure we get great teachers, making sure that our students are doing well, and if they aren't, what do we do to make it better, and just making sure that their future is bright. When you look back at the history of public education and our founding forefathers, you will see that the first attempt at public education didn't work. The second attempt did. And if you look back at the history books, they started it so we could have an educated electorate so that people would vote for the people they believe that could run this country well. And I believe the public school system does that. You know, we're accountable to everyone as far as standards and testing and certification, and we welcome all and we teach all. So my vision is that we continue to have a strong public school system in Indian River County. Thank you.